This is too much. Yeah, well, come on now. Don't, don't, don't touch me. Don't you touch me, Ralph. You don't know me that well. When it comes to groundbreaking comedians who have left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry, Flip Wilson stands tall among the greats. In the realm of comedy and showmanship, legends are not just born, they are sculpted through adversity, refined by challenges, and defined by their resilience. Such was the story of Claro Flip Wilson, an artist whose journey from the gritty streets to the shimmering spotlights of Hollywood was nothing short of extraordinary. He was truly the first in many things, including wearing a dress. What are you gonna do with a chain? Oh, throw it at the skaters. <laughs> you devil, you. I'll see you later. To understand how it all began for Wilson, it's crucial to understand the socio-political landscape of his era. The mid-20th century was a time fraught with racial tensions, civil rights movements, and a desperate need for voices that could bridge divides. Comedy, with its unique blend of humor and social commentary, emerged as one such voice, and at its forefront was Flip Wilson, deftly weaving narratives that were not only humorous but also deeply reflective of society's undercurrents. Yet, for all his brilliance, Wilson wasn't just a product of his times, he was, in many ways, ahead of them. At a time when television was largely dominated by white faces, he carved out a space for himself, and by extension, for many other black artists. Through his characters and skits, he brought forward narratives that were both universally relatable and deeply personal to the black experience in America. Admittedly, as we peel back the layers of his career, we'll encounter a blend of acclaim and controversy. One such contention is the theory surrounding his portrayal of female characters. Most notably, Geraldine. So was Flip Wilson the first black man forced to wear a dress on screen? Or was there a deeper, more complex story at play? As we traverse the chapters of Flip's life and career, expect to be taken on a roller coaster ride of emotions. From the highs of his professional successes to the personal lows and struggles he faced off stage. We'll journey through his early years, filled with trials and tribulations, moving on to his meteoric rise in the world of comedy, the intricacies of his characters, and the legacy he has left behind especially for dress-wearing among black comedians. We will aim to unravel the man behind the laughter, the artist beyond the characters, and the legend that still resonates in the corridors of comedic history. This is the story of Flip Wilson. Interestingly, Flip Wilson's trajectory to stardom began in the least likely of places, amongst the cobblestone streets and bustling alleyways of Jersey City, New Jersey. Born as Claro Wilson Jr. on December 8, 1933, his birth itself was amidst the whirlwinds of the Great Depression, a challenging period that would come to define much of his early life. The youngest among ten siblings, the Wilson household, was filled with the cacophonous laughter, tears, and shouts typical of a large family. Yet, the echoing laughter masked underlying struggles. His mother, Finding it difficult to cope with the challenges of raising ten children amidst economic hardship, abandoned the family. This event was pivotal in shaping the young Claro's life. With the absence of their mother and a father overwhelmed by responsibilities, Flip and his siblings found themselves in and out of foster homes. The frequent moves and separations from his siblings were heart-wrenching. Yet, it was during these turbulent times that the seeds of humor were sown. Comedy became a coping mechanism, a way to navigate the complexity of his emotions and the hardships of his environment. It wasn't long before he found himself in trouble. A mischievous spirit, combined with the lack of stable adult supervision, led young Claro to several run-ins with the law. These led to his eventual placement in a reformatory. Admittedly, this period was one of introspection and transformation. Away from the familiar streets of Jersey City, the reformatory, while harsh, provided structure and discipline. It was a stark contrast to the freedom and chaos he was accustomed to. 
But even within the confines of the reformatory, Clairo's zest for life was evident. He would often regale his peers with stories, adding humorous twists that left them in splits. This was the genesis of a comedian, the realization that he could turn his challenging life experiences into stories that could entertain and resonate with others. As he approached his teens, the desire to escape his circumstances grew stronger. The lure of the vast world beyond the reformatory walls beyond Jersey City was irresistible. And so, at the tender age of 16, with a forged birth certificate in hand, he enlisted in the United States Air Force. This decision would set him on a path far removed from the challenges of his youth. The Air Force exposed him to a plethora of cultures and experiences. His duties took him far and wide, from the domestic skies over the United States to the international terrains of Europe and Asia. Yet it wasn't the thrill of the aircraft or the allure of foreign lands that captured his imagination. It was the camaraderie, the close-knit community of servicemen that left an indelible mark on him. He quickly became the life of the barracks, his comedic routines providing much-needed respite to his fellow airmen. It was here, amidst the roaring engines and echoing laughter, that Geraldine was born. This character, a sassy, no-nonsense woman, would later become one of Flip's most iconic creations. Interestingly, Geraldine's inception in the male-dominated Air Force environment was a testament to Flip's observational wit and his ability to draw from his surroundings. His time in the service was transformative. From a young boy searching for stability to a young man with a newfound passion, the Air Force years were pivotal. By the end of his stint, it was clear that the world of comedy beckoned him. The stages and spotlights of Los Angeles were a far cry from the reformatory walls of Jersey City. But Flip Wilson was ready. When the comedian set foot in Los Angeles, it wasn't the shimmering city of dreams that many imagine. Shockingly, it was a city rife with racial tensions, socio-political upheaval, and challenges. Yet, the vibrant entertainment scene was alive and thriving, and in it, Wilson saw not just an opportunity for fame, but a platform to make his voice heard. Initially, the comedic scene was domineered by established figures, leaving little room for newcomers. But this didn't deter Wilson. He took to performing in smaller clubs, often to tight-knit audiences who came for a few laughs after a hard day's work. He became a regular at local joints, and the dimly lit stages of these clubs became his training ground. With every performance, he honed his craft, refining his timing, delivery, and rapport with the audience. As Wilson continued performing, word spread about this new comedian who could weave humor effortlessly with contemporary issues. One of the hallmarks of his comedy was its relatability. He touched on everyday topics, from relationships to the quirks of city life to deeper societal concerns. People didn't just laugh because he was funny. They laughed because he voiced thoughts and experiences that resonated with their own lives. The 1960s, in particular, was a decade of profound change. As the civil rights movement gained momentum, there was an increasing demand for black voices in popular culture to authentically represent their community. Wilson, with his finger on the pulse of society, didn't shy away from incorporating these themes into his routines. Shockingly, while many comedians steered clear of controversial subjects, Wilson embraced them. His comedy was more than just about evoking laughter, it was a commentary on the times. Within this backdrop, Geraldine became an essential part of his routines. More than just a humorous character, she was a reflection of the strong black women of the time, challenging societal norms and making their presence felt. She wasn't just sassy. She was assertive and self-assured. Through Geraldine, Wilson celebrated black femininity while also addressing broader societal prejudices with a humorous twist. Intriguingly, the very act of a man donning a dress to portray a woman was in itself a statement, breaking gender barriers 
and challenging traditional stereotypes. His growing reputation caught the attention of fellow comedians and agents. This network was vital in a time when personal connections often dictated opportunities. Among those who took note of Wilson's talent was the influential comedian Red Fox, known as the King of the Party Records. Fox's endorsement provided a significant boost to Wilson's career. In an industry where competition was fierce, having a seasoned comedian vouch for his talent was invaluable. The late 60s saw a gradual shift in his fortunes. Television, which was becoming the dominant form of entertainment, beckoned. His appearances on The Tonight Show and The Ed Sullivan Show introduced him to a nationwide audience. These weren't just platforms for him to showcase his comedy. They were opportunities to challenge and change perceptions. With the dawning of the 70s, Wilson's persistent efforts culminated in the creation of The Flip Wilson Show, a variety series that showcased his talent on a grander scale. The show was groundbreaking in several ways. At a time when black-led shows were rare, it not only provided representation, but did so without pandering to stereotypes. Moreover, it opened doors for other black artists, providing a platform for them to showcase their talents to a broader audience. Through the highs and lows, successes and challenges, one thing remained consistent, Wilson's authentic voice. His journey from the clubs of Los Angeles to national television was marked not just by his talent, but by his tenacity, resilience, and unwavering commitment to staying true to his roots. The Flip Wilson Show, while a comedic variety show on the surface, was much more profound in its significance. In the heart of the 1970s, a period often labeled as the golden age of television, Wilson's show emerged not only as a beacon of comedic excellence, but also as a bold representation of black America. While television had started to evolve, with new genres and forms of storytelling making their way into living rooms across America, the representation of black artists and stories remained limited. Against this backdrop, the Flip Wilson show wasn't just another addition to the primetime slot. It was revolutionary. The show boasted a rich tapestry of sketches, monologues, and guest appearances. These segments, while designed to entertain, often had an underlying message. Wilson, with his acute sense of social awareness, ensured that the show was a mix of both light-hearted comedy and poignant moments that reflected the societal issues of the time. Moreover, the Flip Wilson show provided a platform for many black artists who, despite their incredible talent, found it challenging to break into mainstream television. Notable personalities, including the likes of Richard Prior, Lena Horna, and the Jackson 5, graced the show, adding their unique flair and amplifying its appeal. By providing a stage for these artists, Wilson was not only diversifying the entertainment on his show, but also making a statement about the richness and depth of black talent that mainstream media often overlooked. Admittedly, one of the standout features of the show was Wilson's characters. While Geraldine remains the most iconic, characters like Reverend Leroy, the self-proclaimed pastor of the Church of What's Happening Now, showcased his unparalleled ability to capture and portray the diverse facets of black culture. Through these characters, he addressed a myriad of topics, from religion and politics to societal norms and relationships, the characters were familiar, resonating with audiences as they saw reflections of their own lives, experiences, and communities. But it wasn't just the black community that the show appealed to. Its universal themes, coupled with Wilson's broad appeal, ensured that it resonated with audiences across racial and demographic lines. This widespread appeal was evident in its soaring ratings, making it one of the top shows of its time. Intriguingly, the show also impacted the broader television landscape. Its success paved the way for other black-led shows and challenged the industry's status quo. Producers and network executives could no longer ignore the demand for diverse content that truly represented the fabric of America. 
The legacy of The Flip Wilson Show can be seen in the subsequent rise of black-led sitcoms and variety shows that found their way to the screen in the years that followed. However, beyond ratings and its impact on television, the show had a more profound societal impact. Through comedy, it highlighted the disparities, prejudices, and challenges faced by the black community. Yet it also celebrated the culture, resilience, and spirit of black America. Additionally, the show played a role in shaping perceptions. For many viewers, it was their first genuine exposure to black culture and experiences. By portraying characters and narratives that were authentic and multidimensional, the show dismantled stereotypes and challenged preconceived notions. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of The Flip Wilson Show was its message of unity. At its core, the show was about finding common ground, celebrating differences, and coming together through the universal language of laughter. In an era marked by divisions, it served as a reminder of the shared human experience and the power of storytelling to bridge divides. But things were not always smooth for the rib cracker. The word controversy often sparks interest and intrigue. However, when coupled with a figure as prominent and influential as Flip Wilson, it carries an even heavier weight. To truly understand Flip Wilson beyond the spotlight and the stage, one must examine the controversies that dotted his illustrious career. Wilson, like any artist in the public eye, was not without his share of contentious moments. These weren't merely sensationalized tabloid stories. They were reflective of the challenges and conflicts of the time. The most significant controversy, perhaps, was the alleged perpetuation of stereotypes through his characters. While Geraldine is celebrated as an iconic character, critics argue she played into the hands of reinforcing gender and racial stereotypes. Geraldine was sassy, loud, and often seen engaging in antics that were not always viewed in a positive light. The character's famous line, what you see is what you get, was meant to be a testament to authenticity. However, some critics viewed it as a perpetuation of the trope of black women being straightforward to the point of bluntness. Admittedly, Geraldine wasn't just a comedic character. She became a cultural symbol. Some saw her as a caricature that fed into a certain narrative about black women. The backlash was a reflection of the broader discourse of representation in media, was it acceptable to portray characters that might reinforce certain stereotypes, even if they were rooted in comedy? Wilson's perspective on Geraldine was of love and admiration. He saw her as a strong, independent woman who spoke her mind and stood up for what she believed in. But it also raises an essential question. Where does one draw the line between comedy and caricature, especially when navigating the delicate landscape of race and gender? Another significant point of contention was his portrayal of black men, particularly in dresses. The act of a black man dressing as a woman has been historically layered with implications. Critics argue that it emasculates black men, making them appear less threatening to white audiences. This softening or feminizing of black men in media was seen by some as a tool to desensitize audiences to the challenges and struggles faced by the black community. Furthermore, the entertainment industry's historical portrayal of black men in such roles can be seen as a form of typecasting, limiting the range of roles available to black actors. Wilson's decision to wear a dress, whether comedic or not, became a part of this broader discourse. Additionally, Wilson's personal life wasn't free from scrutiny. His rise to fame and the pressures that accompanied it led to struggles with addiction. While many celebrities grappled with similar issues, especially during the 70s and 80s, Wilson's battles were highly publicized. The media's portrayal often oscillated between sympathy and sensationalism. His relationships, too, were a point of discussion. The comedian's marriages and divorces were often in the limelight, with the media delving into the intimate details of his personal affairs. For someone who was fiercely private, this intrusion was challenging to navigate. It's essential, however, to contextualize these controversies. The 70s was a time of significant societal change. Conversations about race, 
gender, and representation were becoming increasingly prominent. Wilson, by virtue of being a black artist in the public eye, was inevitably caught in the crossfire of these debates. Moreover, while these controversies offer a nuanced view of Wilson's career, they don't define it. His legacy extends beyond these contentious moments. It's rooted in his groundbreaking work, his contribution to the entertainment industry, and his role in amplifying black voices. Understanding the controversies surrounding Flip Wilson allows for a more holistic view of the man behind the legend. It's a testament to the complexities of navigating fame, particularly as a black artist during a transformative period in American history. Success is an interesting prism to analyze a person's life, especially for someone as multifaceted as Flip Wilson. For him, success wasn't just about awards and accolades. It was about breaking barriers, setting precedents, and most importantly, staying true to himself and his roots. The true zenith of his career, however, was the Flip Wilson Show. The show, which aired from 1970 to 1974, was groundbreaking on multiple fronts. Interestingly, Wilson's success wasn't limited to the television screen. He ventured into music, releasing several albums during the 1960s and 70s. While he wasn't a traditional musician, his albums were an extension of his comedic persona. They were funny, poignant, and deeply resonant, offering a musical dimension to his multifaceted talent. Another remarkable aspect of Wilson's career was his adaptability. While The Flip Wilson Show was undoubtedly the pinnacle of his success, he didn't rest on his laurels. Post the show, he ventured into acting, taking on roles in movies and television shows. This transition wasn't easy given the typecasting that often occurs in the entertainment industry. But Wilson, with his characteristic determination, carved a niche for himself, showcasing his versatility as a performer. His successes also translated into tangible accolades. He was the proud recipient of two Emmy Awards, a testament to his immense talent and the impact he had on the entertainment industry. However, more than the awards, it was the love and adoration of his fans that truly defined his success. His shows were not just popular, they were cultural phenomena, touching the lives of millions of Americans. It's also worth noting that his success was achieved against a backdrop of significant societal change. The civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, and the broader cultural shifts of the 60s and 70s presented challenges and opportunities. Wilson, through his work, became an essential voice during these transformative times, offering insights, laughter, and solace to a nation in flux. For Wilson, comedy was about pushing boundaries, exploring different personas, and most importantly, making people laugh. He once said, I'm not a comedian, and I'm not sick. The world is sick, and I'm the doctor. I'm a surgeon with a scalpel for false values. This was his ethos, using comedy to dissect society, even if it meant courting controversy. People loved Wilson not just for his comedic genius, but also for his authenticity. He was real, with all the imperfections that come with being human. This vulnerability endeared him to his fans, making him one of the most beloved figures in American entertainment. Today, his legacy extends far beyond the confines of his television show or famous characters. His impact has resonated throughout the decades, not just in comedy, but also in how black artists navigate and influence the entertainment industry. Ultimately, Wilson laid the groundwork for a slew of black comedians and actors who would follow in his footsteps. From Eddie Murphy to Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock, many have acknowledged Wilson's pioneering role. His success proved that black comedians could be the main attraction, not just the sidekick, or the supporting act. Moreover, Wilson's brand of humor was groundbreaking. He did not shy away from addressing racial issues, but he did so with a light touch. He used comedy as a mirror to society, highlighting its absurdities and contradictions. This subtly approach was impactful. It made audiences laugh, but it also made them think. Additionally, 
Wilson's entrepreneurial spirit set him apart. At the height of his career, he was not just an artist, but also a savvy businessman. He took charge of his show, both in front of and behind the camera. This autonomy allowed him to retain creative control, ensuring his vision was not diluted or compromised. This approach was ahead of its time. Today, many artists, from Tyler Perry to Issa Rae, have adopted a similar model, ensuring they have a stake in their creations. His influence is also evident in the realm of representation. Wilson's characters, particularly Geraldine, have left an indelible mark. While controversial, Geraldine also paved the way for future drag characters on mainstream television. RuPaul, the world-renowned drag queen and television personality, has cited Geraldine as an influence. In a landscape where drag has now become mainstream thanks to shows like RuPaul's Drag Race, Wilson's early foray into this world seems prescient. But perhaps the most significant aspect of his legacy is his enduring appeal. Even today, decades after his show aired, Flip Wilson's comedy remains relevant. His jokes, his characters, and his sketches continue to resonate, a testament to their timeless quality. The issues he addressed, from race to gender, are still pertinent today, making his work as relevant as ever. However, with legacy comes responsibility. Today's artists, while drawing inspiration from pioneers like Wilson, also have a duty to address the complexities of modern society. The landscape has evolved with new challenges and nuances. Comedy remains a powerful tool to address these issues, but it needs to adapt and evolve. The debate over representation, for instance, is more intense than ever. In a world of social media and instant feedback, artists are held accountable for their choices. The controversies that surrounded Wilson, particularly regarding Geraldine, are instructive. They serve as a reminder of the fine line between humor and offense, a line that today's comedians must navigate with care. Furthermore, in an age of streaming and on-demand content, the television landscape has changed. The traditional format of a variety show, which Wilson mastered, has given way to more segmented, niche content. However, the principles of storytelling, of connecting with an audience, remain unchanged. It's a lesson that modern-day artists can learn from Wilson's illustrious career. In conclusion, Flip Wilson's legacy is multifaceted. It encompasses his trailblazing role in television, his unique brand of humor, and his impact on future generations of black artists. But beyond these achievements, his legacy is also a testament to the power of authenticity. Wilson was unapologetically himself, both on and off the screen. It's a quality that endeared him to millions then and continues to do so now. As the entertainment world continues to evolve, Wilson's legacy stands as a beacon, illuminating the path for those who follow. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.